Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Third Party, the podcast I host with my triplet sisters. And I'm he- I'm Sydney, and I'm here with... I'm Samantha. I'm Savannah. And today, let's have some fun. Let's get into it. So this week's episode is all about roommates. If you don't already know, Savannah, Samantha, and I live together in New York, and we're roommates. And I think it's been a great experience. We've had our fair share of, like... Fights. Yeah, tense situations, even preparing for this podcast today we fought yeah we always make it through so we've had a a lot of different living experiences throughout college like living alone living with sweet mates living with strangers so this week we're gonna give you our advice on roommates just how to pick them how to live with them and how to keep them which sounds like dating but it is like dating yeah exactly so let's start with the square one how to pick a roommate what did you guys do when you first started looking for roommates for college but I figured that was the first situation we had to ever live with someone okay so back when we were looking for roommates a lot of people were using like Facebook groups and stuff so that's what I did I did the social media route which I'm sure so many people can relate to um I feel like nowadays for incoming students it's like Instagram people are using instead of Facebook but same deal just found someone on social media you know like found someone who gave the same answers to questions that I thought I did as well as like went through their Instagram or Facebook posts and kind of got a vibe for what they were and then just picked based on that um honestly because I chose my college so late like I chose it with two days to go the roommate thing just didn't work out um but yeah it was the Facebook group was everything like that's how you saw I guess who was who like people almost became little celebrities in the Facebook group so yeah did you fill out a questionnaire Samantha or go um do like what the school like because I know people go random I filled out the questionnaire but I was so late that they said don't like not don't but it's not gonna matter Mm -hmm. and they put me in the dorm where they put all the leftover kids that yeah I bet that always happens so I knew my life was gonna be bad up front like I knew but I looked out I had an amazing roommate like the person that shared the room the rest of the suite mates were interesting, but whoever shared the room with me is who I cared about the most. Yeah, that's probably most important. Yeah. I also went the social media route, and it would have been nice if I had, like, a mutual friend to, like, connect me with someone, but I just went based off of Instagram, and I think it worked out pretty well. Um, No major cons at all, but what do you guys actually... Mine didn't work out, just saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine didn't either. Mine didn't work out. Like... There were no red flags, but like we kind of said in an episode like from last season that I hope you all listen to, um, going with social media and judging based off appearance can kind of be a little difficult. Oh, it's fake. And you don't know what you're getting yourself yeah. into. So do we have any recommendations for um, people for how to actually choose one? See, I, I think like you can't. Same. Right. I honestly feel like it's so hard and that you can't. But I feel like something that I would stay um, away from is kind of just like, when people are like, oh, like just even trying to find someone who fits a certain aesthetic, to me, you just want a genuine person at the end of the day, as well as just someone you will get along well with to live with. I feel like it's something that should also be prioritized because just because someone is a great friend doesn't mean that their living habits are compatible with yours. And, and yeah. that's going to also cause tension in your relationship with right. that person. I think it can be rough in college or boarding school or whatever it may be. Um, because you still want someone you can be social with because a lot of times they're the, your first introduction socially into the school. So I think picking someone that probably would be your like friend, um, makes sense. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times like, like it, it doesn't work out living wise uh, based off of like what I've experienced. But I've also have some people that, you know, they've picked off someone that seems like they could be their friend in their Facebook group that has similar interests that I guess looks the vibe, which I think a lot of people need to let that go, but yeah, I'll continue. Um, and they're still friends to this day. So, you know, it just I just think you never can know. And I think that's what makes living with people so interesting. Um, it's just you you don't know until you know. Yeah. Right. And I also feel like, too, like, don't be afraid to ask, like, the important questions, too. Like we just said, like, finding out what that person's music taste is is one thing. And 
might be important for you to know, but also just their living habits too. It's seeing what works for you and what doesn't. I, right. I yeah. also was saying I think it's low key a different ball game, different states when picking roommates post grad. Like oh, we were yeah. blessed and lucky that we were able to kind of all live together and yeah. move to the same city. But if you know no one and you move to a city like New York and you need a roommate, I kind of think it's back again to like the little mm -hmm. groups and things like that. But I think asking the hard hitting critical questions can make a big difference because something I think is important is lifestyle. Um, you, I agree. Especially being in a city like New York or anywhere, you want to be able to have a good time with your roommate. But some people <laughs> love to break the bank. Like I we went to a friend's pregame. Um, the other day, she had Casamigos when my friends was saying, I'm not a Casamigos household right now. Like, <laughs> we just started living, like, we're just working. But what if you have a roommate who wants to, like, have ball the out thing. all the time? So I think that's something you should also take into consideration. Make sure you can, or just know yourself and be restricted and have people respect those boundaries. But it might be a little bit easier if there's people automatically, like, level playing field. Also, one thing there's so many different branches of people but one thing that i would just copy and paste on any facebook group or i would literally i make it like a joke but it just wouldn't be i would say seeking a roommate that did chores on the weekend growing up there like you weeded out a whole subsection of people that at least know how to clean like actually or did chores at home or had chores at home or just something. And I'm talking not just the occasional laundry every six months, but consistently knew how to upkeep a household. I think that makes such a difference because I think that's where people start to fight. Like the, oh, she didn't do her dishes and it's attracting flies. We I've had that situation. Or she left her food out. Like people don't even know how to handle food. So, yeah. Yeah. And like Samantha said, I feel like it just all stems from being honest with yourself. Like, I feel like so many people would repeat themselves in these Facebook groups or Instagram groups um, saying like, oh, I like going out. By or even in person yeah, when exactly. they're meeting up with them or on FaceTime. I'm down for chill nights, whatever that means. Yeah. But <laughs> if you don't like me going out, I feel like I the best way to go is in that group literally just being real and being yourself because you don't want to wind up with the roommate that's constantly going out and doing all this stuff and that doesn't fit who you are. Mm -hmm. It'll make you stand out. Like, people love that you kept it real in mm -hmm. that Facebook group. I know I would have gravitated exactly. towards that person and be like, oh, she's cool or whoever. Um, like, sh well, yeah, she's cool. Like, she, like, you know, she seems like she knows who knows who yeah once and yeah so i think the main thing is practice self-awareness and i think people always ask like should you live with your best friend like i know for some reason for yeah. some people that's getting into like hot water and can be unknown territory again like for some people it works out for some people it doesn't it never has for me junior yeah. year of college i lived with two of my best friends and <laughs> they aren't friends anymore i'm just gonna say that <laughs> <laughs> and, but it's just because like as roommates, we were not compatible at all. So just, yeah. Practice self-awareness. Exactly. Be aware. Yeah. And even if this person is your best friend, it does not mean that you're going to like living with them. Yeah. Exactly. Also, I don't, like, here's my thing. Um, just to, like, weed people out up front. I, like, there's one segment of person I call, like, the Venmo monster. And personally, like, this isn't, like, anything bad or anything, but just, like, notice people's habits. Like, if your best friend is a type that will literally, which I agree with owing money, like, nothing's wrong with that. But if your friend's the type of person that will, like, get a pizza, you didn't ask for the pizza, and then Venmo you <laughs> for the pizza, and Venmo requests you for the pizza after you took one bite, don't live with them. Like, if that's, like, the friend then that's just going to be a whole thing when you li like look at these habits assess the person um yeah or if they're the friend that will never venmo you for anything that's what exactly. i was thinking because don't i feel like at the end of the day don't let anybody else play with your money right <laughs> take and, advantage of your kindness exactly and yeah and also for me this is just one way that i protect myself in a roommate situation this might be unpopular with who's ever listening but i don't do 
favors in a sense like accept things like if somebody no. is constantly um like let's say that someone orders food they're like oh you can have it too. don't like, eat it that's not me like i'm not gonna keep taking stuff from yeah. people for like from people for free like, even yeah if it comes to like them buying all the cleaning supplies like it's different if you are covering things in a different way but if this person is constantly contributing and you're not contributing anything like even if you think that it won't cause t- tension i feel like it will it causes but if you're all, my but thing if is though don't offer though too. like sometimes yeah. like people it's unfortunate because you don't know people's intentions or how people feel and this is why another aspect of being a good roommate is being able to communicate effectively because people who offer things and then get upset that someone else is taking them it's like why did you offer to begin with i mean for me that's why oh, i accept I favors at all like, that's why i'm not no i'm agreeing with you like i don't ask someone to drive me i don't ask someone to do stuff for me i won't even ask you to take my laundry out the machine i'm gonna do it all on my own and i don't know if that's like a self-protection mechanism or what yeah but yeah i don't think you don't want to mooch but even if it is offered it could come across as mooching i guess what you're kind of saying so. but also i feel like that just depends on the relationship you have with the person yep. i think that if you're like living you're sharing a space you're living with this person i think that having pre-establishing the relationship where it's like oh we're not going to um be on each other about certain things but just what needs to be done will be done R- or for example for like offering the people thing if one person is offering a lot just say, hey, like, I know so you're, like, picking up a lot of the slack. You don't have to do that. Like, just, mm-hmm. just I just think so many things to be solved with simple communication. Same, but people we'll, don't want to do but that. But people don't want to do that. And we'll get into that more later. Yeah. Because it'll just run you into trouble. I agree with all of that. So I think if I was going to sum it up to just, like, things to think about is, like, lifestyle, being just self-reflective and being authentic and knowing what works for you and what requirements you have and just being – and presenting those and authentically telling people so you don't get stuck in a bad yeah. situation. And just because your parents, uncle's cousin, like, knows this person, that does not a good roommate make. I'm going to tell you that, nope. like, right up front. Okay, so I think even if you do follow our advice and go through all those steps, there are obviously going to be, like, inevitable problems with living with people. So how do you guys deal with roommate drama? And have you had any big situations? Um, yeah, I feel like, (laughs) um, roommate drama arises, like, obviously there have been some situations that have been worse than others that I've been in, but, um, it all comes down to communication. I feel like just being upfront with people and just communicating in a way that is respectful, um, but also just like getting what you want across and just being honest is the best way to go. And to me, one thing that I cannot stand whenever conflict arises is when this person, it was when like the person you're living with is like, oh, I'm going to like, hey, would love to talk when you get home. It's so annoying. Don't leave me a stick. Someone like uh, laying down the hand. Right. I know. Nowhere in the, like, I'll get so mad. That triggers you before the conversation started. Exactly. So I feel like just be like, and to me, that's also kind of passive aggressive. It is. I don't know. But there's so, yeah, yeah, Which, yeah. So yeah. don't behave like a child. <laughs> be upfront. And like, if you have an issue, like if something's been weighing on you all day, I feel like the best way to approach everything is in person through conversation. And don't be that person that hits them with the text like, hey, we're going to talk when we get home because I'm not going to want to talk to you. At all. Yeah. I'm I'm going to just not come home. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Until 1 a.m. go straight to my room. Yeah. I also think that, like, to me, like, if things are building up and, like, all that stuff, then not trying to sound bad, but it's kind of your fault. And the reason why I say that is because there's so many things up front that you can nip in the bud that while it might be uncomfortable, it gets the thing done. Agreed. I think that when so many people, it's almost like people kind of think they're a martyr for, like, sitting on information and, like, not expressing themselves. You're not. You're just wasting time. Just literally be like, if you notice, uh, like, week one, this – Whoever you're living with is not like it just leaves everything sitting out. Just, you know, some people like to do that. Just leaving the food sitting out, leaving everything sitting out. Just so you'd be like, hey, is there any way we could just like start putting things away? And, you know, I'll I'll help if it means that we're going to break this habit. But, you know, just 
nothing's i think that sitting on that for six months why like yeah yeah i definitely agree with that and i think again like being comfortable speaking up for yourself too because i remember i had a roommate who would okay i'm not gonna say i was a model roommate or perfect roommate by any means like people can definitely come for me for that but i remember i had a roommate who would like tell me oh can you hey you left this out like the one time i leave something out out of like all the times so i'm like but you leave stuff out all the time it's like wait why am i getting mad when i should have like Samantha said, maybe said something up front. I noticed that you're angry. type A. I yeah, would like to exactly. That. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I'm like, maybe I should have just said something from the get go yes. instead of like suing and getting mad over it. Um, but also, when you are calling out behavior, I personally recommend just like putting things into perspective. Like maybe someone she, left their shoes out wine. once, but most that of the helps. time they're pretty organized. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It's, it can be easy for someone to like always come across as like the. I guess, parent in some roommate yeah. situations. And yeah. I feel like just knowing that life happens too. Like if somebody is in a rush when they're going out to me, like, cause I had a roommate the one time I left my bed a mess cause I couldn't figure out what I was going to wear. I was hit with the whole pair. Exactly. And to me, just like recognizing that life happens is the way to go about things, but also don't allow people to disrespect you, if, especially if it's like repetitive behavior. Like if, if it had been, it would have been one thing if I constantly left my bed a mess or whatnot, but that wasn't the case. It was just that one night. So yeah, all this reminds me of well, one of my favorite TikTokers, Sabrina Breyer. Shout out to her. Um, she has this passive aggressive roommate series where it's like I don't know, probably like fifty videos at this point, where it's just like the little things that kind of everyone can relate to in that roommate situation. So yeah, I feel like all of our scenarios are just kind of like that. So shout out to her, come to the podcast. But yeah, yeah, I also think a question that has been brewing in my mind because we've seen it all before, like especially when people move to new cities or like going to college, do you have to include your roommate in everything just as a whole? Um, no. Yeah. Like, what if you have roommates in different, fr your roommates a different friend group or something along those lines? What are your thoughts? And, like, should you always maybe be inclusive or do you err on the side of they, I don't know. Like, you get the point. Yeah. You get the question. See, to me, this is a hard question. Yeah. Because I think it's definitely one thing, too, especially if you're in the same friend group. Like, mm, mm, that's when people have been sticky situations. Right. But I feel like um, at the end of the day, like, you're your own person and, just because you're living with someone, you're not a package deal. So mm -hmm. just being respectful of how that other people person may feel if you were in that situation, but also living for you because at the end of the day, like you already live with this person, you see them all the time. Like you want to do stuff by yourself as you should. So I say go ahead and do that. And um, I also feel like I'm just – and also the three of us in general, we're pretty inclusive people. And, like, if something is a group gathering, to me it's always, like, the more the merrier. Like, that's right. just the mentality that I have. And also, here's where I think that just, like, the social gatekeepers really leap out in these types yes. of things. Yes, that's, that's what I was thinking. Say, because there's so many scenarios, especially freshman year of college, where I know I would have worked that room. I would have had a great <laughs> yeah. time. But I just wasn't invited. Maybe and, that's why they didn't want you there. Well, you know what? Anyways, <laughs> basically, <laughs> I just think that, especially with, like, living situations, I will always just give you the invite. I don't care. If you don't want to be there, you can go home. Like, I think it's better that you have that invite just to, and sometimes, like, I think if it kind of will sit on me and I'll be like, uh, I don't know, then I'll always lean towards yes. Same. Because me too. I think that's where people just can be it's like they don't even think of the other person it's like oh they're just someone i live with no this is a person you can invite them to do things and also like i love to spend a lot of time alone but when there's that weekend pressure and you know it's wednesday and people are starting to talk about their plans nothing's wrong with if you have like something to do to say like hey i'm going to this if you want to come right like they don't have to they can say oh i have something else going on which sometimes for me a lot of times they would but i invited so that made me feel better about myself and Samantha's advice to me is great for, especially when you're living with someone, the beginning, the starting point, like when you're coming in freshman year and you have a new roommate or like when you're moving to a new city post-grad, I feel like give that person the benefit of the doubt. Because I remember my roommate freshman year came in 
um, with the mentality, I guess, that she didn't want to be friends. Like, she didn't invite me to anything. Everyone and then, themselves. yeah, and I feel like she didn't know me that well, just like I didn't know her. And maybe we would have been great friends, but it was like already automatically putting someone at an arm's length. And I just don't think that's the way to approach things because you never know who could be one of your best friends. And it hurts yeah. feelings for yeah, no reason. For no okay. reason. This reminds me of my freshman year roommate. But she'd be like, oh, you never invite me to things. Like, you never invite me to things. She's like, oh, I thought you had it all figured out. I'm like, I thought you had it all figured out. So like, I just think yeah. it's, you just have to be inclusive. And I think also... You know, like, you know when someone might feel excluded. Like, and you know when someone kind of doesn't have plans. That's my point. Yeah, yeah like, you They're know not. when you should do the right no thing and posting. include someone. Yeah. I just think people do it intentionally most of the time, in yeah. my personal opinion. Yeah, I feel like if, if don't think that person's not doing it intentionally. I, I, I think like, they very well do. Like, I agree, social gatekeepers. And if you live with one of those, don't live with them again. Like, <laughs> You don't have to hang Wait out with for them. that lease to break. I mean, to <laughs> yeah, end. move on. Yeah. Uh, what about also a point of contention about living situations is boyfriends and visitors as a whole. Um, yeah. To that me, can be difficult. I feel like um, it doesn't matter if you're sharing that dorm room or if you have your own room and apartment. You need to ask that other person about having someone else in your space because I because there's been times where I haven't been asked or anything like that. It's me. I feel like at the end of the day, both of your names are either on that dorm or on that lease. Right. So be respectful. Ask people when they have visitors as well as, yeah, I feel like just be respectful and also be mindful of that other person in the apartment and thinking like, oh, would I be upset if this person did yeah. that? Yeah. Right. I've had so many incidences with <coughs> random men just in the apartment. Um, I would say, like, my freshman year, for example, I wanted to take a nap after my class, said an early class, came in, and there was a guy under my bed, like, <laughs> under my bed. And I was taking off my shoe, and I just went to get my shoe, and I literally, like, I haven't been scared like that in a minute. But he was just chilling on his phone, no, Nintendo Switch, <laughs> under my bed. And he was just hanging out with, like, my roommate, and she had these two guy friends that would just always be there. But that, like, scared the crap out of me. And I'm like, you just leave. Like, they're just in this room just hanging out. And they would stay there until, like, honestly early the next morning. Like, they wouldn't leave. And, yeah, so one time I literally just had to talk about it. And I was like, hey, like, is there any way they could not be in here all the time? And, wo like, World War, <laughs> like, three happened. It was like, I can't even say that. Um, it was like, oh, like that was so rude of Samantha. She's trying to mess up the group. And the two guys were like, so why are you trying to mess our group up? So, you know, just dramatic kids. But, yeah, just even stuff like that where it was, like, friendly and not sexual or whatever, just let somebody know. Like, come right. on. Right. Like, you, it doesn't matter. But I also think, in a way, even a if you do ask, like, someone, like, hey, can this person come over? Also be self-aware because, at least for me, if someone asks, I'm probably going to say yes, and that could just be my people-pleasing ways, because I don't want to be the one who doesn't, who's going to say no, even when I would feel most comfortable if they weren't there. Um, so maybe think, like, would I appreciate having someone here, like, every week? Exactly. And I also, you just have to be up front and give people a heads up. Even yeah, if it's not day an of. individual that both of you guys are friends with, like, we don't know what your roommate's going through that day. Maybe they are crying on the phone to their mom <laughs> walk in the room and some random boys are in the room. So I yeah. feel like mm -hmm. be respectful and always give someone a heads up and a, um, and a chance to say no. Like, right. Like, oh, this person here. And also allow people to openly say no without yeah. setting it up right. so that you're trapping them. All the little people that are just trapping, like, oh, yeah, sure, that's fine. Like, my boyfriend's coming in two hours. What right. Say? What are you going to say? I bet that oh, all yeah, happens. Yeah, or, like, yeah. Oh, can someone come over, like, after this? During and finals. It, yeah, it's during finals. Like, let's just think. Like, let's just use our brains and think, would I appreciate that? Because I remember, even, like, even if they're such a nice person, sometimes you just want space to yourself. Like, sometimes you want to be in your living room alone. Like, I would have to run from my shower because I had, like, a bathroom that didn't connect to my room. And whenever my roommate's boyfriend was there, I'm like, oh, shoot, I gotta hype myself up to get in the shower or make sure what? they're gone because I'm gonna have to, because I don't want like them walking down bring the hallway and seeing me or bring my clothes in here, which like, it's not that big an inconvenience, but it is nice to just always be able to let your hair down because yeah. you're 
paying for these too. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I agree with every point that was brought up. Yeah. Um, and then I guess my other horror story that I'll share really quick that has to do with boyfriends is I've literally had someone have, well, my random roommate sophomore year have sex next to me, like whole full thing. And by this time I was like, they would sleep in the same bed together and we had an L shaped room. So my bed would be facing the wall straight. So I got all like every sound like beats can only do so much is my point. They can only drown out so much. And, um, yeah. And one time I just got so mad and upset that I, that I got up and I opened the door wide, like just opened the door, kept it open. So the rest of the apartment heard it. And my thing is, if you're going to do that, have some dignity. <laughs> I was like, why would you I was want like, why to? would you want that me That was there? my first thought. Like, why would, you, why would you want me involved? Yeah. I mean. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but have some, some dignity don't care. and respect. Like, come on. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Like, let's. Yeah. Yeah. Not just common courtesy so, like, at the end of the day. But, some, but I guess that's to say that some people don't care. And that's it. You are a fly on the wall. Yeah. Yeah, that, nothing wrong leaving the door open. Nothing wrong with standing up for yourself at the end of the day either. Because so. I had been saying stuff like, right. hey, can he not sleep over four nights a week? And then, um, yeah, and then she packed his bags and went to his place. He and had like, a house. And Samantha <laughs> said that she had been saying stuff. This was in a dorm situation. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I'm just going to be, I feel like, don't be afraid to be that person who tells the RA. If you keep telling <laughs> I agree. over and over, Call like, me a also, snitch. I'm Tell the, the RA, RA not to blab their mouth. Like, I always the RA say, doesn't have to say, I told you. Yeah. I know, but I always say because people be like, oh, she's a snitch because she told That's the what RA. I said, yeah. Um, not if no one else. Right. Well, the R- who else is going to tell them? The RA is not going to know someone's in the room. I know, but I don't need everyone. Like, do you know what I mean? Be a little secretive about it. Be like, oh, hey, you mean the RA don't host like a floor meeting? Yeah. Oh, I don't think they'll do that. Okay, yeah. Maybe they would. That's yeah. crazy. But yeah, I think at the end of the day, like, the main message here is if you want to be. Like, have a good roommate, be a good roommate. And it's not that hard. Practice common courtesy. Pick up after yourself. Yeah. Just be a decent human. And just a tip I always say, if you're going to have a deep conversation, I don't, maybe it's just me. I don't even care if it's with my mom. I'm not being in the room. Like, I'm not having a deep conversation in my apartment when someone else is there or in my room when someone else is there. I know people are, like, pretty comfortable, like, talking on the phone and doing stuff like that. At least no. to me. I just never enjoyed that or want to i can relate to that like i remember this is when i lived with one of my friends junior year like actually one of my best friends well to this day we survived um basically this was like during like peak covid lockdown 2021 like my school shut down and my problem was i couldn't find a place to cry so because i was like going through it at school didn't like school at all And I would literally, we had our own individual rooms and the walls were so thin and I was so embarrassed that I would go into the closet, the sliding, not big closet and cry to my mom or cry by myself in there because you could just hear everything. Like I could hear when my roommate was crying to her parents and I was like, that can't be me. So yeah. But yeah, my thing is too, like at the end of the day, your room should be your safe space. So do with it as you want and, and also give people space like, yeah, especially if you share a room maybe not be in there all the time so other people have room to breathe and actually have a conversation at least i yeah. intentionally would do that sometimes like all right we share this room in between this class i'm gonna sit in the common space so someone can let their hair down for a little bit right but it's so much different when you have your own rooms versus sharing a room like that's different. yeah I agree. Um, but because yeah, I feel you when you share room, share rough. room yeah. it is very hard to find a place to cry. Yes, it is. I feel I just didn't. Yeah, I would cry on campus. I yeah, you have I to hide. Walks. Same, I'd be walking. Like, walking around my end. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't want to trust, like, risk someone walking in. So. Yeah. And one thing that I would do, which I wouldn't recommend, I would go to UPenn's campus. And cry there because I'd be don't like, know anyone. yeah, because I went to Drexel, so Penn was right there. So I'd be like, I'd go, I'd be like, they don't know who I am, but then that backfired once, so don't do that. Yeah. But if you all have any roommate horror stories, funny stories, feel free to share with them. We'll share them on our social media. So share that with us, I and see we'd love to hear. Um, and if you have any questions, make sure you reach out. But moving on to our segment, which we've introduced this season called Party Favor, which is our helpline where you send us questions, we give you advice. And 
these are centered around roommates. So starting with the first question, how do I tell my boyfriend I don't want to live with him? So there wasn't any context with this question, but just based off of that, what do you guys think? Say I don't want to live with you. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like um, you have to be upfront with him. And also, don't get pushed into anything you don't want to do. Or else that's just going to cause problems down the line. And, like, you deserve to have your own space away from him. So, right. like Samantha said, say, I don't want to live with him. And also, if you need help crafting this message. I love doing that. Feel free to DM us because we will write a message for I stay you in people's business. to send to your boyfriend. Yeah. And it'll be nice, too. But up front. I, yeah. I think at the end of the day, like, even if he is offended or upset, you got to do his best for you because I'm not yeah. going for a couple years of not enjoying my living situation. And if right. that ends, the, <laughs> that's why I thought that what it does. the um dating and the relationship. relationship, he was not the one. That's what I mean. Yeah. Right. But then also, I just think, like, make it impersonal. Like, even just turn it inwards and be like, I don't like living with people. I, you are, but also, doesn't he know you you by now? Like, I'm not, (laughs) not going to work. Even if he knows you by now, society has kind of like made it seem like, oh, you need to live with someone. That's the next step. Right. Right. Like, that's the next step. But if you aren't ready for that, or maybe you simply don't want that, don't do it. Maybe you just want the ring first. Exactly. Like, you, that's fine too. Right. Or maybe you just don't, like, I'm not going to lie, like, my one friend lives with her boyfriend, and I visited them once, and I was like, wow, this is, like, a man. Yes. Taking, like, the space, the difference in how, like, just some guy just takes some space is astronomical. <laughs> so, I understand what you're saying. Um, I don't, There was not a context. But, yeah, um, definitely just even saying, like, hey, like, you know, you – you know you have your life i think it could be like even like even though this might not work say it could be fun to have like sleepovers where i just like sneak over yeah i Don't, agree Make aren't you gonna special. miss that <laughs> that was special. Right. yeah i think that's a good I, yeah good way label it. special yeah. yeah but at yeah. the end of the day don't feel pressure too like especially we all have different phases of life some people just don't enjoy doing that i don't want yeah that, so. and i know say no yeah. yeah and i know so many people are having that conversation right now that i've even heard so yeah, you don't have to do what everyone else is doing all the time. And we also seem so young. Like, we're still so young, have so much time yeah. left. Like, if you I was going to... do not need to live with the man. Right. right. If this is end your relationship, early that's 20. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, moving on to question number two. My best friend and I met freshman year and decided to live together the next year. However, she ditched me for another group of girls last minute. What do I do? Yeah. I think that's really tough. I feel like a lot of times we talk about regular breakups more than friendship breakups. And I feel like if my best friend was to leave me in the situation where I have to scramble to find someone else and just inconvenience me and not think of me as all, that shows their character. And that's not an individual. You need to be friends. So you're saying it's the end of the relationship for you personally. I second that. Um. I have experienced this um, throughout my wonderful college experience. Um, And I will say that it's very, like, I have been ditched twice, and it sucks. So, first of all, my condolences. But also, you really just set yourself up. Because I don't know how much time you have left and if it was earlier or later. Yeah. Both of mine were last minute, like two weeks-ish. Which ago. Is very it just seems, yeah, I don't and understand people do that. there is no panic because you feel like it lays out your whole year where you're living. And there is no panic, like, finding, like, where you're going to live last minute. I had to live alone. So, like, my senior year. But my point is, try to socially set yourself up so that the pain of that whole thing going wrong is a little bit minimized. Like, set yourself up to live with even, like, a person that you may not be your best friend, but someone that you at least feel comfortable with. Like, make yourself as comfortable as possible. Because a lot of times, I would just be so desperate to be in a certain building or be in a certain area of campus that I'd be like, oh, I don't care if I'm uncomfortable. And then i live with a random and it sucked. So, just... Seriously, just set yourself up to, like, have as decent as an experience despite all of that. I think it might be kind of hard, too, especially if it's last minute, but I agree with that whole point. 
I mean, yeah, with this question too, like the key words were like that I took away was your friend ditched you to live with people who they thought were well, better. better. So exactly. That, just shows that they do not value you. Like it's one thing if like, they can't live with someone mm-hmm. for various reasons. reasons. Yeah. They're but they different. ditched you to live with other people. I don't know. It might have to be the end of the relationship for me. They might. It should be. Yeah. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And we're not friends anymore. Exactly. It would have to be the end yeah. for me as well. I don't think there's anything wrong yeah. with that. Especially if your friend's the type of person who's going to leave you scrambling, stressed. Right. Uh, all of that. I know. And also, people don't take into account about, I don't know if you're personally paying or your parents or whoever, but it's expensive to switch stuff last minute. Right. I think not even, like, it was expensive for me to live alone senior year. And I think just, like, I agree then, like, it's just... Think of a person as a person and just all the factors that go into that process is also something that you should keep in mind as to whether you want to like pursue a relationship. Yeah. And I also think, it, oh, sorry, continue. I was going to say, if you're on the other end of the spectrum where you don't want to live with your best friend or anything like that, just be upfront with that person because you, I feel like no one could get mad at you if you're upfront in the very beginning. Exactly. And give them a chance. Like if this person asks like, oh, do you want to live together? Just tell them no right then and there. Instead of letting it go yeah. on till the summer. Don't double book a room in August. There aren't any dorms left. Yeah, we know people who've gotten like sucked in living with someone they personally would prefer not to, but it is what it is. Like you just gotta do it. Yeah. It takes a special type of person to like leave someone last minute, I think. If like for other people. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Our last question came from a listener who said, I recently was let go of my job. And I don't think I'll be able to afford paying my rent. My roommate offered to help cover me in this situation, but I'm scared that if she does this, she'll resent me. What should I do? I feel like with the roommate, like saying that they would cover you, um, I don't know what your relationship is with that person. If that's something they're, they're kind enough to do, that's nice. But I feel like I would definitely be trying to pay this person back in the future. Right. And figure out a plan. Like, maybe it's a payment plan or something of that nature. Maybe you have to borrow money from your parents. I don't know. Or not, if you don't, if you can't do that, like, asking other um, people who are more established in your life might be the way to go. Because I feel like that's a lot of pressure for someone our age person. But even people yeah. have to like take out loans and people have yeah, to. Yeah, like maybe you have to do, take out loans. No, I'm not saying oh, to sorry. do that. I'm not saying to do that. I do not. Th- first of all, I think the whole situation personally for me just wouldn't be worth it. No. Like, Same. I would rather, like, even I think the luxury of being able to like move back home is insane. That's what I was. But thinking. I just personally, I can't even, like, I can't even set myself up to have that established relationship because to me money creates power and there's already such a power imbalance like you gotta clean all the dishes now because (laughs) she paying for this person's paying for everything or something i don't know either way like although for some people money's not that deep they can cover another person it won't matter to them i think it just it's such a unfortunate situation that i would just like personally i would remove myself i would Same. never I would, especially if it's like for socially like I'm, having this I'm roommate saying, i would 100 percent remove myself too but somebody might be in the situation where they can't call home or don't have right. parents who they can go back home and live with and i feel like in that situation i feel like with that pressure on me i would try to figure something out whether it's having to take an odd job that i didn't right. like some work. people can't do that with like school they lost but their, their job. job. Oh, they lost yeah, their job. Yeah, they lost yeah, their yeah. job. Say, yeah. Take up whatever you I can. Kind of if think... it's babysitting, do that. If it's working at a diner, do that and figure out a way to make that money. Yeah, we kind of already spoke earlier how, at least for us, like, I think the roommate resenting you would be terrible considering she's the one who offered. But then again, like, she, money does uh, create power. Right. And maybe I wouldn't even take that risk. If it were me and I lost my job, it's a terrible situation. But I think I would... A, either have to move home, move somewhere that might be less expensive if I can't supplement the rent, even if I do become a waitress. And even maybe offering, like, find a replacement yeah. roommate for me and someone, like, cover my half, which could take months. Because you know, nothing pays as much as it used to yeah, either, anyway. So, so that odd job difficult. could not even cover the rent. That's what I I'm just thinking. think I would remove myself. From me too. Day. And also, <laughs> as hard as it can be, I feel like sometimes you got to make a GoFundMe. Or I know. 
Yeah, yeah. I would. I lost my job. I, I need support. Yeah. I'm yeah. actively searching for other things to do, but I'm yeah. support in the meantime. That's what GoFundMe for. And don't yeah. be embarrassed. I would yeah. be doing that. Find the, get the community to lift you up. Yeah, if you have someone to kind of go to for support, if you don't, just you might just need to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is unfortunate even like finding a replacement roommate might ruin the vibe for the current roommate, but your current roommate should understand. It's not your fault. It's out of your control. So I hope you figure it out. I kind of want to update on this. So yes, keep us up. Follow there. up, please. And good luck too. And positive energy your way. Well. Yeah, sending our support because that's very stressful, but it will all work out. So that's the end of this episode. We hope you enjoyed and took away some great tips on how to find a roommate and have a positive living situation because it's rough. Um, make sure you leave us a review and comments and thanks for listening thank you guys catch you next time